If I could turn back the clock and go back in time to when I was a teenager, when I had a completely different mindset and more free time than I knew what to do with, a time when I had thousands of questions that I didn't have the answers to, this is what I would say to him. As you move on throughout your journey, you're gonna learn a lot of things that contradict reality. You're gonna to have to unlearn these things and see the world for what it really is. This isn't always a pleasant experience because it's a slow process of learning that the way you've been thinking is wrong. And most of the things you think you know haven't even scratched the surface of all there is to be known without experience. I say that because I thought I had it all figured out. Especially when I was 17, 18 years old, you couldn't tell me nothing. But the moment I moved out and experienced life without the cushion of mom and dad, when I was out on my own for real, living in a different city that was completely foreign to me, that was when my mindset started to shift. Suddenly, I was back to day one of Taekwondo, charging forcefully and confidently towards my opponent, only to be on the floor seconds later, staring at the ceiling, trying to figure out what the heck just happened. My opponent was life. And the hardest lesson that life has taught me as an adult is the fact that there is no understanding in life, nor does life owe me any understanding. I had a really hard time wrapping my mind around this concept because it just didn't make sense at first. And this might not make that much sense to you right now, but the only way I can think to illustrate this is by telling you a story. I remember the rage that flowed through my veins and the confusion that clouded my head when I got my first ever bad grade in college a D minus. I blamed everything and everybody under the sun except for myself. I made excuses like, well, that class was just too hard. Well, the professor didn't do a good job. He didn't teach me anything. Okay, so you're the one who's paying to go here, not him. He got his degree. So what's your plan to fix it? I remember being so angry when I couldn't get a high priority task done at work because the two people that I relied on getting it done ended up messing around and going home early. But it still had to be done by any means necessary, but I was all caught up by the fact that those two went home. Okay, so it still has to get done. You're gonna let those two not being here get in the way of you and your job? You're gonna let this whole thing fall under just because your first plan to get it done didn't work? You're gonna really let that get between you and your paycheck. Really, and you know, another example is when rent's due on the first, it is due on the first. And it could be the worst week of your life. You could have just gotten laid off for work when before that you were living paycheck to paycheck. And then on top of that, you just loaned your friend $1,500 like three months ago and he still hasn't paid you back. So if you had that, you might've been able to pay rent. They don't care about that. Almost having it isn't enough. They don't care, bro. There will be no understanding. Only, where is the money? You see what I mean now? In life, there is no understanding. But see, when you're growing up, you can say, you know, I really don't want to go to practice today. I don't want to take this class anymore. I don't want to play this sport anymore. So what do they do? They take you out of the class, put you in an easier class. They take you out of the sport and they say, I understand. It's not for everybody. It woke me up to the fact that I need to have the same lack of understanding when it comes to the reasons that I can't reach my goals. I have to treat every single one of those reasons as if they're unacceptable because if I accept those reasons, that's the equivalent of me giving up. Basically saying, I don't want it bad enough. I have since applied this mentality across every aspect of my life and it's made me more successful than I thought I would be. That's another thing I had to learn early on, not to underestimate myself. That's something I struggled with a lot growing up. I was always short, and before I started working out, I didn't really have all that much size on me. So when you have that kind of stature, people tend to underestimate you, especially if you're quiet and you don't really come off as if you have a strong presence about yourself. So naturally, people were sleeping on your boy, you know what I'm saying? They used to underestimate me, and because of that, I actually used to underestimate myself. Not all the time, just when it came to certain things, but that actually ended up pouring into multiple areas of my life without me even realizing it. And I'm gonna share them with you. It started off with very simple, obvious things, like basketball, for example. Now that one was too easy. Reggie, you're too short. What do you think you're doing out here playing some basketball? People did underestimate me on that, but I'll tell you what, they weren't wrong because I actually did suck at basketball. Not because I'm short, because I'm just not coordinated in that way. I know you probably expected a comeback story on that one, but I, just, I don't have one for you. 
But, you know, then it came to stuff like weightlifting. Now, when you're a smaller person, obviously people are going to assume that you can't handle a certain amount of weight and they're going to underestimate you. Now, that happened to me, but it just didn't last too long. First of all, I loved weightlifting and I was in there all the time. And before you knew it, like a couple months in, I was already outlifting the athletes in the weight room. I'm talking about the basketball players, football players, wrestlers. I outlifted a lot of them. Another example is when I was on drum line. Like, I remember putting those drums on and people were walking past me. Boy, them drums bigger than you. What you doing out here with those on, man? Right off the bat, getting underestimated. But it was all good, though, because something I was passionate about, even in middle school, was drumming. Now, all the other guys on drum line at the time were more experienced than me. So I did come in a little bit timid, not really sure. But before long, I outpaced all of them. And then you know what happened? I ended up being the captain over the entire drum line and I was writing the music for the drum line. You know what I'm saying? So stuff like that, I didn't let people underestimating get to me to the point where I just stopped in my tracks. And then I went on to play at the college level where I got nasty at those drums. You know what I'm talking about? Go ahead, underestimate me if you want. The most powerful one I had to overcome though was public speaking. This is where that strong presence I was talking about earlier comes into play. Now, back then, I wasn't anywhere near as confident, at least not when I was talking in front of people. So whenever I had speeches in high school, I could literally feel my voice breaking. And I used to hyper focus on every single flaw, every stutter, every eye that was focused on me. So, yeah. I'm pretty sure this was the case where I actually underestimated myself before anyone else had the chance to. I just remember being so nervous. I mean, my heart would just beat so fast, bro. And when I would talk, my mouth would just be so dry. I, and I just remember one time looking over and seeing these kids like directly in front of me, snickering, laughing like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know how high school kids are being all immature and whatnot. But anyways, that type of stuff knocked me off my focus and it really took away from my confidence at the time. Well, even though my confidence did take a hit, I still wanted to better myself at speaking in front of people because I pretty much figured that was something I was gonna have to do for the rest of my life anyways. And so I did, I improved and eventually I got pretty good at it. And you know what I realized? My voice, my experiences and my messages have an impact on people. Through that, I gained confidence which came with an aura or presence about myself that pretty much says that, hey, I understand my self-worth and the value that I bring to the table. I can't say that I've always had that. I didn't always have thick skin. I didn't always have the no excuses mentality. And I didn't always know the amount of value I brought to the table. Look, man, life is going to sucker punch you sometimes. And sometimes it's going to feel like it's in the worst way possible. Your ego might get bruised. You might have to rethink your decisions sometimes. You might even feel like your life is turning completely upside down. This is a part of life. But a mistake I made was letting life beat the crap out of me so much that I forgot I had self-worth and value. When life used to hit me, I used to feel like a victim, worry about things I can't control. And I used to ask myself questions like, why is this happening to me? I don't deserve this. I'm a good person. Yeah, life doesn't care even a little bit if you're a good person, bro. Life happens to everybody. And that's my point. Life isn't just happening to you. It's happening around you. You can't control if somebody like, say, your boss is acting a fool all day. You can't control if the idiots on the freeway can't drive worth two cents. And you can't control what other people do. But you can definitely control how you respond. And if you truly know your self-worth and the value that you bring to the table, you won't allow yourself to be disrespected. You won't show any fear in the face of adversity. And you won't accept the nonsense that comes with the people that think they can try you. You'll nip that stuff in the bud because you have this thing I like to call a little bit of self-respect. It's not going to come naturally to you, but I can promise you when it clicks, it'll stick with you forever. It's all about your attitude, having an abundance mindset, and lacking fear. That's why if your boss threatens to fire you like mine used to do, you look at him or her directly in their eyes and you show them you aren't afraid of the outcome. Now, you're not going to directly say this, but your look is going to say it for you. That look is going to tell them that you have so much value that you could get fired today and then have a better, higher paying job tomorrow. You don't freak out. You don't show them that you're stressed out. You don't even if your financial situation isn't ready for you to lose your job. You do not quiver or show them any kind of fear because at that point, they know they got you. They don't teach this in school, bro. 
So when they come at you sideways, I'll fire you next time. Mess up again. Mess up again. You say, all right, I'll fix it. No problem. It won't happen again. But it's that look you give them that tells them what the real deal is. I ain't scared of the outcome. Who do you think you are? You'll find a lot of times that those are just empty threats anyways. But I'm going to tell you something, though. Even when people come at you sideways, you've got to keep a level head. It, just because they're acting up doesn't mean you have to. You know what I mean? But don't get that confused with you can just let people run all over you and say what they want to say. I'm not saying that because sometimes even as a level-headed person, you have to give people a piece of your mind every now and then so they know what you're about. And that is going to build that respect from other people because you got to train people how to treat you sometimes. Look, I appreciate you. I respect you. You're not going to talk to me like that. Look, I get it. I messed up. But let me tell you something. I will not be talked to like that. They'll be like, oh, they wouldn't even know what to say. A lot of people are afraid to have these types of conversations, especially with like their bosses or something. But I'm going to tell you this. The person you give a piece of your mind to is going to respect you much more just by you doing that. At least that's what my experience has been. And it's the same thing with relationships. Like sometimes girls slash women get to a point where they feel like they don't want to be with you anymore. And sometimes they give you empty threats like, I'll leave. I don't want to be with you anymore, blah, blah. And they'll say like these hurtful things. And sometimes you'll see that some guys get weak off of that stuff. You can't be doing that, bro. And I'm not talking about if you're having normal relationship problems where you're arguing or blah, blah. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if you're constantly being gaslighted and told that, oh, I'll, I'll leave. I'll find someone else. You ain't this. And that. There's the door. You know what I'm saying? That's that abundance mindset I'm talking about. Like if things don't work out between you and her, there are plenty of other girls to go around. I'm just saying. Like, don't you dare get all soft and start begging like, no, please don't. Leave. That's weak, bro. Don't do not do that. That type of behavior just shows that you're not ready for the adversity that life is going to throw at you. And people are going to catch on to that. And I promise you, you will lose respect every single time you act like that. So whether it's a job threatening you or your girlfriend threatening you, you can't be active. No, please don't do that. We don't, we don't got time for that around here, bro. Don't start acting soft. I'm telling you. If things don't work out between you and her, there's plenty of other girls out here, bro. Move on. And ladies watching this video, if y'all could do me a favor and just confirm it in the comments. Like, am, am I wrong? Like, put it in the comments what you think. Do you think, do you, do you like it when a guy gets all soft and pathetic, sappy and all that stuff? Let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate that. I have a feeling it's going to be a big no. That's what I've seen in my experience. And that reminds me of something else I want to talk about. Back when I was a teenager, I had a ton of time on my hands. And most of the time was wasted because I spent it playing out scenarios in my head. And to be honest with you, I was living in the past a lot. And what I would do is I would ponder on the negative things, rarely ever the positive. If I could sit in front of my younger self right now, I would tell him just how unproductive this use of time is because it doesn't change anything. I mean, I remember the days of replaying situations in my head over and over again, overanalyzing every bit of every interaction, catching myself in awkward moments. Just like when you go to the movie theater and they say, enjoy your movie, and you're like, thanks, you too. And then you suddenly realize just how stupid you are for not realizing they ain't watching no movie. I would play stuff like that out in my head all the time. Or I would play out the arguments I had at school thinking about what I could have said or trying to figure out what someone meant by what they said earlier. If the joke was just a joke or if it had some truth to it. Gosh, man, looking back, that was a huge waste of time. But you know, some of that is a result of hanging around too many people in the first place. I had to realize not everybody is your friend, despite how friendly they might act when they're around you. And I also had to realize that I can't trust everybody. In fact, there's very few people I can trust. And of course, I had to learn this the hard way. Hey, look, pay close attention to this, okay? You have to keep your circle small with people that you can trust. And that's typically going to be family and friends. But just keep one thing in mind. You can't always tell if you can trust them or not. At least not until someone proves that you can't trust them. But also remember this. You can't control what other people do. You can only control how you respond. And the way you respond to someone you can't trust is you cut them right off without any hesitation, without any afterthought. Code.
It might feel uncomfortable at first, but you got to look out for you because the way human nature is set up, if someone does you wrong one time and they see they can get away with it, they're going to keep doing it over and over again. And if you decide to be the bigger person and let them back into your life, you're basically asking, hey, please do it again. And I get it. I completely understand where you're coming from and wanting to open your world back up to them is commendable. But I'm telling you right now, it's not smart at all. Someone who betrays you doesn't belong in your circle. And speaking of trust, you know what? Let's talk about dating just one more time, just, just for one minute. Bro, never put a girl above your goals. Don't be that guy rearranging your whole life, going in late to work, missing work, or missing out on opportunities because you're so in love with this girl, you're really feeling this girl right now. Look, man, here's the deal. Feelings are temporary. And I've seen so many guys let their temporary feelings lead them to making permanent decisions. Like throwing away your entire career to spend more time with a girl who leaves you a month later. That is the definition of weak, bro. I truly believe doing stuff like that makes people legitimately lose respect for you, especially the girl you're dating. And the reason I'm saying that is because I've actually seen it happen a bunch of times. It's not like anyone's a bad person that's in these stories, but I can I can tell you from experience and from what I've seen, I have not seen it end well a single time. Not one. And I think it's because when you're in a relationship and you tell them what your dreams are, and then they literally watch you contradict everything you just told them about what their dreams were, they happen to lose respect for you. And you, I mean, can you blame them? But for y'all watching the video, this is just my opinion. So don't come at me sideways in the comments. That's all I ask. So anyways, this channel is mainly about personal finance and personal growth. And it focuses heavily on building wealth. So what I want to say here is this. You're young, man. So while you're young, learn as much about investing as possible. And, and while you're learning about investing, learn how to manage your money better while you're young so you'll have the means to invest when you get just a little older. And as soon as you can start investing, invest immediately. And I promise you, you will see some serious results in the next decade. I want you to focus on these things. Build your character, build up your money, pursue purpose and impact. And above all else, take action so you can achieve your goals and dreams at a young age. You will have naysayers and you will have haters. Good. You know those video games you be playing? When you're lost and you don't know where to go, you at least know you're going in the right direction once you see enemies coming your way. That's the advice I would give my teenage self. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, tell a friend, share this video, do what you gotta do. I appreciate you watching this. I will see you in the next one. Stay cold.